Samsung's Exynos 2600, Qualcomm's Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5, and Apple's M5. These are the best of the best when it comes to mobile SoCs that are used in devices these days. And while it looked like the Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5 had beaten the competition in the Android ecosystem, a recent benchmark shows Samsung is able to topple Qualcomm in both single core and multi-core CPU performance, while basically matching Apple's new M5 chipset in single core workloads. The next 12 months are going to be great for the smartphone market, because even if you don't end up buying one of these high-end phones, the advances will trickle down to low-end and mid-range devices over the next couple of years. Let's take a look at these scores. And before we dive in, if you end up running into any issues following this guide, or you just have a question about Android in general, then please send in an email to questions at explainingandroid.com. And if enough people start sending in these emails, I can put together a weekly or monthly Q&A video for the community. So we'll see how that goes. When it comes to Geekbench 6 tests, all of these have been scored recently. Here's one that has been circulating for the Apple M5 chip. Here's one that's been going around for the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5 SoC. And here's the chart that was recently shared that claims to show the performance of the Exynos 2600. And I say claims because this one is a bit difficult to verify. The community believes this was tested with the corporate version of Geekbench 6, which is why it hasn't been uploaded to the database. And the person who shared this on X says they were able to find it on a Korean forum, which lines up since that is Samsung's country of origin. And if we take this data and enter it into some graphs, that will help us get a visual of the performance we can expect to see with these three chipsets. Apple looks to be taking the lead here with the M5 able to achieve a single core score of 4,263 and a multi-core score of 17,862 within the Geekbench 6 benchmark test. Because we're not seeing any chip from an Android phone getting close to 17K for its multi-core score, which is honestly surprising because for years, Qualcomm was able to beat out chips from Apple when it came to those multi-core tests, but that doesn't seem to be the case with the M5. Then we have the Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5, which was able to get a single core score of 3,836 and a multi-core score of 12,352. And the latest benchmark details that we have here is for the Exynos 2600 with its single core CPU scores able to reach right at 4,217, and its multi-core CPU scores were shown to reach around 13,482. So the numbers from the Exynos chip clearly shows that it's able to overtake the flagship chipset that Qualcomm is able to release, while basically matching the M5 from Apple when it comes to single core workloads. We look at these again for single core. We have the M5, the Snapdragon, and the Exynos. And for multi-core, the M5, the Snapdragon, and Exynos. With that said, I highly doubt the GPU in the Exynos 2600 is going to be able to match what Qualcomm has inside its Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5. And when you factor in the progress that's been made to those GPU drivers lately, a device with the best that Qualcomm has to offer is definitely going to be worth it next year. These graphs aren't showing that the company has dropped the ball. Instead, they show how far Samsung has come over the years. Let's just hope that these numbers hold up when they're actually in production devices because we still haven't been able to see the Exynos 2600 in a consumer product yet. Samsung has finished developing it. They're just in mass production mode right now as they prepare for the release of the Galaxy S26 series.